Okay, good day to everyone. Good day to YouTubers. My name is James. Today I'm going to show you about some of my, one of my savings spreadsheet with you. So, in this spreadsheet itself, the purpose of creating this spreadsheet is to have a roadmap of what I'm going to save, how I'm going to save in order to reach my target. So, for this spreadsheet, is specifically caters to those who have income, investments, and also contributed to CPF, Central Provident Fund, which is in a short CPF in ordinary account. CPF is only applicable to Singaporeans. Of course, other countries like Malaysia, US, they have all sorts of similar savings from savings scheme from the government itself. So this is CPF is what Singapore has, government has for their citizens. So in this page itself, you can see that I have savings column, investments, CPF, uh, CPF interest. The reason why I have these four columns is because these are the cash that I can use to purchase properties. For my properties investment so which is why I use this set of parameters to do a roadmap in order to purchase my own condo my first condo so in this first row is for the actual sum that I have right now then follow which by 17 January target I should have this July target I should have this January target for 2018 I should have this and estimate itself is basically in the form of the target that I have when I retire 55 years old these are the expected targets and these are the current amount that I have based on the Adding all this together, so I have this amount, and then there's the business and the completion percentage. So these are all just dummy data. So this is in order to enable me to have a vision on what I have for my roadmap from now to 2017 January, July, or 28 January. The reason why I set up this is because, firstly, I want to save up money in order to buy, purchase my first condo and the target for the first condo will be listed at the bottom here the estimated bank loan 80% 20% payment 3% stamp duty legal fee all these are all in Singapore context so you can change whatever you want if you are living in United States of America you live in Korea Japan whatever sum of amount you have just edit it accordingly on the formulas here and this is a surplus that I need to have to purchase this amount this sum from the itself so I, this enables me to understand where is my position where I able will I able to attain this target of purchasing a condo itself price 150k 600k 650k and so on and so forth you can change whatever the amount that you want this can also be a target board for example buy car for this column for this column buy a house for this column wedding for this column you can do it Just change the amount here and all start here we have this passive income block what does this passive income represent? It's representing the amount that you get from your dividends, the amount you get your bank interest, the amount you get from your bonds, and etc. All these are passive income. It will be stated down here when you update your Excel spreadsheet. Later, I will show you how do you update this passive income column itself. This is the only generator, so you don't need to edit anything down here. It will reflect once you return 
amount of the dividends collected on the income section itself. Later, I'll show you how to go. So these are the charts. Represents the actual. This represents the actual the current amount that you have. These are all the target bots, which represents the percentage itself: seventeen point five four. 49.89 etc etc so this is the basic use of what first page might have and also one more thing is the saving trends how much you save you can see whether there's the ups and downs of the saving itself first month is up second month is down third month is up you can see what is the trend is if the trend is keep increasing it's good if there's some ups and downs, then you need to see which one is the period that you spend most, which period you spend less, so you can adjust it accordingly. So once done, for this first page, we're going to the stocks and investment. So this is a stocks and investment page. So you can add in um whatever you want here, which is pretty easy. Just edit the stock code. In yourself, and what is the current quality you have, and just see the total. In case first, you can just add in accordingly and you just see the difference. In case first, the difference for right now, it's better not to include in the I have not included in the main spreadsheet is because what's lost is lost. What you need to see are the actual target itself that you need to achieve. Of course, sometimes people want to keep track of loss, they can click here, but reflect it I mean, the actual amount of differences, the difference won't be reflected on the overall page. This is not uh, stock tracking, it's just a portion of it itself for the stock and investment. It's just a portion, but not a main highlight. So next we come to income. You can see there's lots of columns growth. So you have gross salary and income is calculated based on your after you deduct your CPF, if you remember, central provident fund self, and this is the amount you have minus expenses. Then this is the CPF that will go to your ordinary account. All these formulas are here, so you don't need to add yourself. And this interest that you get for the current month. You can type it here and we reflect on this column is up three hundred. Because it's count by two one one five. So if you go to income two hundred plus one hundred three hundred two one five you get three hundred. And you cash deposit, you can put in investment money deposit if you have like for example, if you sell your shares, maybe for five thousand dollars, and you can key in here five thousand dollars, and reflect in your overall, um, overall actual cash that you have, saving cash. But it will reflect your total saving because you don't treat investment money that you sell off as a saving itself. So this is it. And this CPF interest, you can edit it accordingly because what we get is from our own CPF interest rate itself for per month. And also we have expenses like the travel bills, your entertainment bills, travel entertainment bills, allowance, if you buy shares, yes, edit accordingly and the total expenses. And do note that the total expenses also do not include shares. Shares is not the expenses, but it's just transferation from one account to another account. Of course, we have to take into consideration of the commission, but we don't take it in as expenses. But take it as a loss in investment. So after you update all this thing, you can show it, reflect it on the front page itself. 
So this is my overall saving spreadsheet that I will that I've come up with. So if you have any question or any improvement that you want me to edit, do tell me. And one more thing is that one more piece of good news. Last piece of good news is that I will share this spreadsheet to all of you. To those who really need it, I will share it with you. I will share it. So you can take this, take a copy of it, and edit on your own. And if you have any questions, please, please comment it below on the video below so that I will keep myself updated and improve my saving spreadsheet as to improve my own saving planning as well as keep the others updated as well to update the latest saving spreadsheet formulas into the formulas or anything that I missed out do tell me thank you very much for watching watching this video and i hope you would like it for the spreadsheet itself yeah and this is my first video of sharing my personal thoughts on my saving spreadsheet so Thank you for the support and subscribe my channel if you like it. Thank you very much and I will continue to contribute more to this kind of saving plans and other attractive saving alternatives that I've come up, that I've found and share it with the people on YouTube. So thank you very much. Thank you for watching.